Hey there crew, it's Mark. So just recently I was shopping with my kids and my family inside of Five and Below. They were picking up some candy and some fun things. And I walked down a stationary aisle no matter where I go. Convenience store, big box shop, it doesn't matter. So I have to go down the stationary aisle. And when I do, I see a two pack of fountain pens for $4.25. I have to pick them up because, well, I love to say, hey, guess what? You don't have to spend a lot of money on fountain pens, maybe. Let's see how well these pens actually do. So when I brought these home, I thought, well, what would be a good comparison? I actually have a pen. It's my most expensive pen that I have from Waldman. It's the Titan, fully made out of titanium. And I thought, which one would actually write better? I actually haven't even filled up my Titan yet, so today will be the first time that I'm doing that, all for this video and comparing it against a $4.25 pen. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's see which one works out best and what's really the difference between $4.25 and $425. When I saw these in the store, I was like, ah, I have to do this. Even if I just purchased them just for this video, honestly, $4.25 for two fountain pens is insane considering some of the other prices that we have out there for fountain pens. So how good can they actually be? So inside of this $4.25 package, we have two different fountain pens. And we also got four cartridges. So this is a cartridge that you can fill up. I doubt you can purchase an ink converter for these, specifically from whatever brand it is. I don't even see a brand name on it. I see who it's distributed by, where it's made, but no other information. So, you know, it's, it's from an inexpensive store. What are you gonna get? This has two different nib sizes that's going to come with it. So we have one here, which is an XF. So it's an extra fine, probably about 0.38 millimeters, I think. We'll do a writing sample with both of these. And then the one that we'll go ahead and compare with the Waldman will actually be our extra fine. The Waldman's a fine tip, but something you're seeing a little bit more. It looks closer to see how we have the Lamy tips. Material-wise, $4.25, you really can't expect more than you're gonna get here. So it's extremely, you know, it's plastic. No doubt about it, nothing else. The screws on here, the plastic screw. The grip does have a little bit of a grip, the same as you would with any type of like inexpensive pen. Um, nothing fancy there, but it does hold really well inside the hand. This pen design reminds me very much of the Pelican Twist. I got one of these each for my girls actually, and the price isn't that bad, $19 to $24, depending where you're purchasing it. And it is nice and ergonomic in how you hold it. The XF nib here actually reminds me of another pen that I have, uh, which is the Dryden fountain pen and that's a $20 pen off of Amazon and also comes with like 24 ink cartridges it's kind of insane and writes really nicely so it'll be really cool to see how these write and uh, how they pair off against the contender which is as of this moment in time the most expensive pen that I own this was a gift from luxury brands of America when I became an ambassador with them I wasn't planning on using this pen anytime soon because I feel like this is just a pen that you look at <laughs> but this is the Waldman Titan so this is a limited edition fountain pen the most incredible part about this pen is that all the visible parts on this pen the cap the body unscrew this your top part here all of this is made from titanium so more than anything, this pen and its cost comes from its immaculate crafting, but also from the material that it's made from. The tip on this also is an iridium tip stainless steel nib. Iridium, if you're unaware, and I'm learning this about it as well, it's German made steel. So that's going to be here, uh, right here on the top. It says a beautiful crafted design on that nib as well. And as I mentioned, this is going to be fine. You're really, paying for the craftsmanship this is a company that's been around since 1918 but how does it hold up against a four dollar and 25 cent pen so what we'll have to do first and foremost with this is fill this up this does come with a converter already but inside of here you're also going to have six cartridges and since we'll be using cartridges in the other one We'll also be using cartridges for this one, just to keep it equal and also to keep it clean. Since we have it out, let's go ahead and load up the Waldman first. 
I love converters because you can put any type of ink that you want inside of it, but cartridges are great if you're the type of person who doesn't want to mess with any of that and you just want to have ink ready to go. All you have to do is just pop your cartridge in. Let's go ahead and screw that back together and we'll set this to the side and let's go ahead and load up our five and below pen. These cartridges you can purchase again and again and over. Or if you want something I like to do is actually refill cartridges with the ink that I want. That way it still keeps it kind of clean. You can just use an ink syringe and do that. So just like the Weldman and any other fountain pen that uses cartridges, you're going to have a little point inside of here. These cartridges have a little tiny plastic ball that's on here that's holding that ink inside of there. And once you pop this in here, you hear that click. That little ball comes up inside the ink and you are pretty ready to go. If you haven't used a fountain pen before or used ink cartridges, the thing that we have to do and what we're gonna wait a moment for, I like to sit my pen like this for a little bit because we need all of that ink to go through the fountain pen feed to make it to the tip so we can write with it. So I've done the same thing with my Weldman as well where I'm placing it just upside down for right now, just letting that gravity pull that ink down. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll go ahead and try each of these out and see how it does. Is it worth it? Because I'm impatient as hell, I already filled up the XF nib on this pen yesterday as I was preparing for this video. I just could not wait. I just had to know how it was going to do, but I don't know how the EF is going to do. But let's go ahead and try this out so I can show you what the extra fine, the XF $4.25 two-pack pen from Five and Below. How's it do? It actually writes surprisingly smoothly. No scratching or anything like that with this one here. It's kind of glides right across the paper, which is pretty impressive. I'm just using some slightly thicker cardstock here, nothing specific for fountain pen writing or anything like that. And um, it's holding on really well. The ink actually looks really nice and dark, has a nice little shine to it. So I gotta say, I'm, uh, I'm impressed here <laughs> with this. This is one of those deals where it's like if you are wanting to get into fountain pens and you can pay $4.25 for one, you don't care about the color or the material, I mean, that might be it. Because personally, these aren't my colors. I would love just like a straight black pen or something like that, but I guess you really can't be choosy when you're only paying $4.25. All right, so this is the extra fine nib. So this is a really nice fine point on here. As I mentioned, this nib is similar to a Lamy. The design similar to Pelican. I mean, it really is pulling from everyone here and selling it for not a lot of money at all. All right, um, I'm impressed. This actually writes really nicely. It has a little tiny bit of give when you're writing with it too, so a little bit of springiness, but super smooth across here. I'm, sh oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, I'm actually really blown away. <laughs> Did not know what to expect for these when you get them. You know, you're like, this isn't gonna work. Now, I'm only using them quickly. What's the longevity, anything like that, I don't know. But as of this moment in time, if you're looking for a pen to write with or draw with, this might be a really good choice if you don't wanna spend a lot of money. But let's say that you do want to spend a lot of money. And that's when we're like, hey, Waldman, this is worth it. So the material, obviously very different. You're looking at a full titanium pen here. Post up nicely, gotta love it. Think the cartridge ink on this one is gonna be blue. I know it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but you know, you, you use what you got. I've actually never used this pen before. As you saw, it was my first time putting it in, so Obviously, uh, I'm getting a little bit of different feels from it. This feels like nothing, and then this has like a really nice weight to it. Incredibly smooth um, 
you know, if I'm comparing one to one, which I don't, can you compare one to one <laughs> when you're talking about, I don't know, and German made steel and nibs and components? I mean, it's kind of hard to do a one to one, but the way in which this one writes is even smoother than this one. This one is smooth. Uh, both pens work wonderfully, no doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less from the Waldman, but that is, you know, that, that's quite the comparison when you really like sit down and think about it and say, okay, am I ready to dip my toe? I'm interested in getting into fountain pens, but like I don't want to spend a lot of money. Well, you don't need to spend a lot of money is really what you know we're, we're finding out here. So if you're the type of person that wants to get into fountain pens, but you're not quite ready to spend a whole lot of money just yet in something you know crazy like a limited edition titanium pen, you could head over to Five and Below or another store and pick one of these up and start to try to use the pens. I think that's the most important part about fountain pens is that if you're scared of them and you are like, well, the price is what's also turning you off, you could do something relatively inexpensive and start to use it inside of your notebooks or start to write with it in your day to day and have really great success. And, and like I mentioned with these two, if you want to start to dabble a bit more, you know, once you run out of ink inside of the cartridges here, you can fill it up with the with your own ink if you wanted to. Maybe some other fountain pen ink you're interested in purchasing. You know, slowly getting into the craziness that is fountain pen loving. <laughs> So as you saw, it's not like a huge difference, but really what I think this comes down to is make and quality and materials that makes pens cost as much as they do versus something that literally is probably thrown together in seconds and probably costs like pennies to actually make. But here's what I really took away from this more than anything, and hopefully you did too. If you're just getting started with fountain pens, do not spend $425 on your very first pen. Start with these, $4.25. See if you like it. See if your notebook likes it. See if you enjoy the process of writing with something like this. And if you really do like it, then start to invest. Still, I don't think you should jump to a really expensive pen because there's such a huge range in between that we saw. Even the Pelican Twist, a great pen to try out, better quality than these here, but a very similar make and model and feel of those. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below on what you think about fountain pens and if you would give these little guys a try or if you're like, no, let's go for the big dog. I want titanium. <laughs> It'd be fantastic to hear from you below on how you got started with your own fountain pen journey or if you've been interested in trying them yourself. As always, I appreciate you hanging out for these videos and I'll talk to you next time. See ya.